Hello, Matthew Gatos here. Welcome back to part two of 5.2 division. In the last video that I did, we looked at dividing radicals in which they had a monomial denominator, meaning one term. In this video, we're going to look at how do we divide radicals that have a binomial two-term denominator with roots. So I think the nicest way to do this is just to start with an example of numbers and how we solved it using monomials, we're going to borrow that idea to solve it for binomials. So in this first example here, I've got 1 over root 2. So the root here has to go away. I'm not allowed to have a root in the denominator. I need to simplify. So I want to get rid of a square root. And the inverse operation to taking the square root is squaring. But if I were to square this, I would change the value of the number. You can't just randomly square a number and have the same value. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to use the idea of squaring a number by multiplying it by root 2. That's essentially squaring a number. But to be fair and not change the value of the question, since I multiplied the bottom by root 2, I need to multiply the top, the numerator, by root 2. So root 2 over root 2 is 1. And I can multiply any number by 1 without changing the value. So let's look at what we have. If I multiply top and bottom by root 2, I have root 2 over root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without the root. And it worked, so I'm happy about that. I went from an irrational number to a rational number. Irrational to rational number, and I did it correctly. Let's look at a binomial denominator. So I'm going to use that same idea. What if I were to square the denominator, just like I did for monomials? So to square the denominator, just like I squared the root 2, I would multiply top and bottom by itself, root 3 plus 1 over root 3 plus 1. Now I haven't changed the value of the question because root 3 plus 1 divided by root 3 plus 1 is just 1. So let's see if that works out. So you can see I've done that. I've applied the distributive property in the bottom. So I did root 3 times root 3 is 3, root 3 times 1, and root 3 times 1 is 2 root 3, and then 1 times 1 is 1. So I haven't got rid of the root in the denominator. I've actually made it worse. So I've gone from a binomial denominator with a root to a, well, I guess if we combine our like terms here, it could still be a binomial. So it would be root 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 2 root 3. But still, that's a lot more complicated than it was to begin with. So I've made it worse. So I have to think of another way of doing it. So let's go back over here. And we're going to use that idea of squaring. Now, it would be really nice if I could square this and square this to be fair. And that would get rid of the root without introducing another root. So I am going to think back to chapter 4 when we did all that factoring. And remember in chapter 4, we had difference of squares. So remember difference of squares? It was like a squared minus b squared. That's what I want. I want to square both of these things. And that factored as a minus b times a plus b. Well, if you look at what I have in the root, I have the a plus b. So to turn it into a squared minus b squared, I need to multiply by this. So I need to multiply by root 3 minus 1 and be fair doing it to the top and the bottom. By doing that, that's essentially squaring both terms. And that's the method we're going to use when we have binomial denominators. So when we have binomial denominators, here's my tip for you. We are going to square, in quotes, a binomial denominator without getting a middle term by creating a difference of squares. So a minus b times a plus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. So what we're going to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Now what does conjugate mean? Conjugate is the same term opposite signs. So the conjugate of a minus b is a plus b. The conjugate of a plus b is a minus b. So you can see in that numeric example I did, it worked out. Once we do that, we just go ahead and simplify and of course state any restrictions if necessary. So let's go ahead and try this question here. 
So I have a binomial in the denominator and I want to get rid of that. So my tip is the conjugate of 4 minus root 7 is 4 plus root 7. So I'm going to create a difference of squares. So let's just write that out. So I'm going to multiply by 4 plus root 7 over 4 plus root 7, like that. That's the conjugate. I multiply top and bottom so I haven't changed the value. Now I'm doing this for the benefit of the denominator. So I'm going to leave my numerator as it is. Don't expand your numerator. It's actually easier just to leave it like that. I'm going to expand my denominator. So I know that I'm creating a difference of squares. So I have 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times positive root 7. 4 times negative root 7 is negative 4 root 7. And negative root 7 times root 7. Well, it's negative, and root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without the root. So you can see my middle term is gone by creating a difference of squares. And then I'm just left in the denominator with 16 minus 7, which is just 9. Okay, so I'm almost done, but I notice that 3 and 9 have a common factor. So 3 and 9 have a common factor of 3. So let's divide each by 3. So 3 root 5 divided by 3 is just root 5. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. So now I have gone from an irrational denominator to a rational denominator through the process of rationalizing the denominator with difference of squares and conjugates. So let's check that on our graphing calculator. So there's my original question. There is my answer. Now in my answer, I actually distributed root 5 in, but I think that this is a better answer with it factored out. So only expand what you're Ex what you're multiplying the conjugate by. So I'm multiplying the conjugate for the benefit of the denominator. Don't expand the numerator. But as you see, if you do, that's okay. You can have your final answer still be equal. Let's try another one. So this time I have a variable in the denominator. So I have to look for my restrictions. Now hopefully you remember those double trouble restrictions. I can't square root a negative and I can't divide by zero. So x is greater than zero for my restriction. Okay, so here's my tip. The conjugate of root 4x plus 1 is root 4x minus 1. So let's write that out. So I'm going to take my numerator, multiply it by the conjugate, root 4x minus 1 over root 4x plus 1 times root 4x minus 1. So I'm multiplying top and bottom by the same thing. I'm not changing the value. I'm going to leave my numerator factored. So only expand what you're trying to rationalize, which is the denominator. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to do root 4x times root 4x. Well, root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without the root. Root 4x times negative 1 is negative root 4x. 1 times 4x is root 4x, and 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So you can see my middle term is gone. So I'm left with 6 times root 4x minus 1 all over 4x minus 1. And that will be my final answer where x is greater than 0. So again, I can always check this in the calculator. Because it's a variable, the check happens in the table. So y1 goes my original, y2 goes my answer. You can see in the table y1 equals y2, so I know I've done the question correctly. So I thought this was an interesting thought. If the number 666 is considered evil, is 25.8069 the root of all evil? Well, let's check on our calculator. It is, in fact, the root of all evil. Something to keep in mind. So you guys can do your practice questions in my notes. Detailed solutions are on D2L. And then you can move on to your textbook questions. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.